<coughs> How's it going, people? Well, I've been better, but <coughs> but I'm getting better. Been a crazy week. It's been a crazy day, and uh, thought making a video might help. I've given myself a choice between this and starting this. So, I thought the best way to make up my mind is to um, roll a four-sided Dungeons and Dragons dice. One and two. The Mennonite wife, or the Christian wife. Adorned for God's glory. Or Ethan Smith's epic view of the Hebrews. I'm going to read this whole book. I'm going to try to do it with as little commentary as possible while reading, which is almost impossible for me to do. But anyway, one and two of the Good Wife tract, and three and four, a few of the Hebrews. Mmm, shaken but not stirred. And it is, God damn it! Two. That means I gotta read the tract. I was actually looking forward to doing this, but you know the dice have spoken. The die has the die has rolled. <sighs> gotta do it. But mm, appropriate to have a bloody Mary with it. Alright. A Christian wife. Adorned for God's glory. Oh, and they got uh, some pretty flowers and a quote from one Peter on the cover. Who's adorning dot 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 let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. That's First Peter 3, 3, and 4. One of the nicer things he said. Ruth looked at the first Wait. Ruth looked at the fat letter in her hand. Quotes. From grandmother. Now maybe I will find some answers to the questions that have been on my mind since our wedding. Our wedding day. Well, dot dot dot. Maybe not even since our wedding day. Maybe before, who knows? Uh, on our wedding day, I wasn't thinking about anything but how happy Mark and I were going to be. I guess the question really came up since then. Ha! Ah, end quotes. Hypothetical quotes, apparently. No Bible citation. <laughs> it isn't a, it's not a, Real person's quote. This Ruth and Mark, they made them up, I think. I don't know. As Ruth eagerly opened the letter, her eyes became dreamy as she thought of the happiness she and Mark were experiencing. Quotations, uh... As I expected, as I expressed to grandmother, 
My desire is that our happiness would please God so that He can bless us. Mark and I both want our lives to be useful in God's kingdom and lived for His glory. If you fill your place, Ruth, and do your part, you can be assured of personal happiness and God's blessing on your life. End quote. Grandmother had said. Okay. Then you don't need to read her letter. She's probably just repeating herself anyway. Besides, it's... I get the feeling this is going to be bad news somehow. Otherwise, why'd they bring it up? Ugh. <sighs> Grandmother had said, then, Grandmother promised Ruth that she would write and share God's plan for the wife's place and part in marriage. Now, here was Grandmother's answer. <sighs> Ruth skimmed over Grandmother's loving greeting, and then she settled comfortably on the porch glider and began to read. When God created man, man was his highest creation. <laughs> rolling dice, rolling dice. makes you think that this was written by men who think pretty highly of the human race. And he had a special plan and purpose for him to fill. I believe it was a uh, husbandry. I mean, you know, naming the animals and tilling the garden. That was before the re rebectomy. Apparently that was an afterthought. We're talking about Adam there. Um, when he was finished, he said it was not good for man to be alone. You know, on second thought, you know, you can always change your mind and add on to your plan, you know. Thank you, if that really happened, because, you know, Kind of fond of women. They're my, some of my favorite people. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, right ahead. Uh, he would make him a helper. Someone to turn the butter. <laughs> to wash them clothes, you know, rub them against a rock and stuff. And all that other fun stuff. And then they get to sleep on the wet spot. Then were the days. I hear. I've heard that said anyway. Ah. Someone to bear and mother his children. Someone to share his joys and sorrows. To extend to him comfort and encouragement. Man needed someone to make a home for him, prepare his meals, and care for his clothing. He needed a, a maid, apparently. <laughs> Man needs a maid. I sure do. <sighs> someone who would give him sympathy and encouragement and loving understanding in all things even in his mistakes someone to be a spiritual mate to help him to be strong and faithful in the things of the Lord hmm 
<clears throat> okay. Ruth, it is God's plan that you should be all of this to your husband. It is your first responsibility and privilege to be a loving, helpful, and it's submissive wife to Mark. <clears throat> How submissive? Just wondering. This is the 21st century, you know. Not that it should have mattered, but it is. To him first, you owe a love above all other loves on this earth. Not counting outer space or anything up there. You might have a, you know, that Jesus is awful hot. Not as hot as Satan, though. <laughs> Second, only to the love you have for God. I gotta stop figuring this out ahead. Uh, yeah, all right. Even on this earth, you still gotta consider the guy in the sky. Okay. Nourish and cherish this precious relationship. Cultivate and preserve it at all costs. As a priceless jewel. You better pick the right guy. Because the guy turns out to be a dick. You're stuck with him. <laughs> Pun intended. Some people are all dick, you know. Because <laughs> it's forever. And maybe even afterwards. If you truly love your husband, you will put his comfort, wishes, and spiritual and physical welfare above all else. You will seek to know his needs and will put forth every reasonable effort to grant them. At least it better be reasonable. And not too degrading, I hope. Only if he should ask something of you that would violate the scriptures do you have the right before the Lord to take God's way instead of your husband's. They should definitely put that in highlighter <laughs> for quick reference. Sorry, honey. Uh-uh. Maybe on your birthday. Uh. The Lord says frequently that the wife should obey her husband. <laughs> Likewise, ye wives, be in submission of your own husbands, dot, 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 even as Sarah observed Abraham, calling him Lord, 1 Peter 3, 1 and 6. So they skipped some. Yeah, didn't he, like, give her to Pharaoh and then later on to, um, oh, God, uh, the, Ph the Philistine king? It's like, man, you sold your wife twice? <laughs> and then got her back, and the guy's like, not cool, dude. It's like, well, yeah, she's a, she is my, technically my sister and my wife, but it's the Old Testament. It's all right. Uh, enough about Sarah and Abraham. Teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So those Varegos out there, they're blaspheming too. Oh, that's from Titus too. Four and five. 
<clears throat> Let the women learn in silence. That's a favorite quote. <laughs> With all subjection. Subjection. Wow. That's even worse than submission, isn't it? Or is it? But, lacuni, dot, 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 suffer not a woman to teach. All right, I know that. The, the part they left out. And left out for space, no doubt. <coughs> mm. Nor to usurp, usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. 1. Timothy 2, 11 and 12. Yeah, that's a favorite of my the church I grew up in. They used to use that one a lot. It's like, hey, you don't pick songs. You don't suggest. You don't get to pray out loud. at the Only the patriarchs can do that. It's a big honor. They can sing, though. Oh, God. Bad memories. And I just lost two ants, so I probably expected to go back to that place for the two more memorial services. I'll see if I can do some video and not be too much of a smartass, since it is, you know, about family. So much going on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Colossians 3.18 It's one more, you know, more of the same, but you know, they're showing that they got lots of source material to prove their point. <sighs> Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. Well, he should give her some head then. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to help. Uh, oh, wait, that's probably not biblical, although I don't think they said anything about that. You know, butt sex, yeah, but I mean, they didn't say nothing about muff diving today in the Bible. Let me know, I didn't see that. Um, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body and your body's the church, right? Yeah. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. This is all very helpful, isn't it? First Corinthians 1 1 also teaches that man is the head of the woman. Yeah. He said that too, yeah. Alright. The Christian woman wears the veiling over her over her uncut hair as a sign. That she is acceptable and uh, that, that she accepts the headship of the man and lives in submission to him. But only she gets some headship once in a while, at least on her birthday. Come on. Valentine's Day. Come on, it's coming up. You married guys out there, don't think you're off the hook. At least give her a rain check. <laughs> yeah. An IOU, excuse me. All right, enough helping. I'll never get through this. <laughs> Ruth, God made the woman for the man, not the man for the woman. 
That sounds like you're second class, though. And I don't think that's very cool. After all, we are all mankind, aren't we? Hmm. God did not create woman to live for herself! The purpose God had for creating her was to live for the man. To willingly and lovingly contribute to all her contribute all her energies to make his life happy, useful, and fulfilling. The woman who is not willing to live a selfless life for her husband should never marry. That's fine. I like it better when somebody has a different address. You know, it's like benefits, but privacy at the same time. Some people like that. The book of Proverbs shows us that wives can be helpful or harmful. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. End quote. And that's the same with a lot of folks. You know, what, you, you inherit the whirlwind you know, by destabilizing your own house. Forgot about that. Oh, that's better. To build a home, the wife must work with and for her husband. If she disagrees with her husband and does not work with him, but takes her own way, she is plucking her home down with her hands, and it's all her fault. As it was with Adam and Evil. <laughs> Bringing death and sin into the world. Many, many, many generations ago, supposedly. Better is a dry morsel of and quietness therewith than an house full of sacrifices with strife. Ruth, with all your energies, seek peace in your home by being quiet and submissive. <coughs> Good to know. Always maintain respect for your husband, even if you disagree with his decisions. Never discuss at great length what you think is a better course to take, thus bringing discord and strife to your home. Okay. This contentious, the contentious the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping, end quote, which enshroud a home and the heart of a husband with weariness and tempt him to bitterness. Only by pride cometh contention, end quote. Another quote, a prudent wife is from the Lord, end quote. Another quote, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness to his bones, end quote. 
Whatever issues may come up, pause, it really makes little difference what they might be. Pause. The important thing is that you always remain a faithful, loving Christian wife. Whatever your husband may say or do. Damn it. You're probably not as smart as him anyway. And, you know, you have your uses. Isn't that just so romantic? I, I'm just, you know, interpreting. I happen to think folks are folks and people are people, and I've met lots of women that are smarter than me, and I'll go with what they say sometimes. Unless, unless they're not. Then they better do what I say, or... GTFO. <laughs> Happy indeed is the man who has a loving, obedient, and unselfish wife. Pity the man who must live with a woman who is selfish, shifts blame, criticizes, points out his mistakes frequently, and magnifies them and insists on her own way rather than finding contentment and doing things his way. I wonder if a man wrote this. <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to be grandma, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think this is all hypothetical. Uh, in observing homes and husbands, husband-wife relationships, here are the most common faults of wives I have observed. And this is Granny talking. Woman to woman. She is not submissive to her husband. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, end quote. She takes she talks too much. Study and be quiet. She is dissatisfied with her circumstances. Be content with such things as ye have. These are quotes, probably from the Bible, I guess. No citations, but maybe in the back. She is given to self-pity. Another quote, let each esteem, an, esteem other better than themselves. End quote. They found something at least. She is impatient. In her tongue is the law of kindness with loving suffering with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, end quote. Quoting something. Probably the Bible. Or maybe Jane Austen. Um, six. She is selfish with time, things, and schedules. Uh, and is impatient and upset with interruptions. You know, it makes women sound like they're just people or something. That's crazy. What, they can have feelings too? Didn't know that. They're so busy doing whatever I want and being quiet and submissive and obedient. Uh, I don't know, somebody ought to be getting wages then. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is for me. I, I work at a job. And I'm all those things. But someone's paying me for it. <sighs> she is given to sulking or exploding if things do not suit her. Another quote. The fruit of the Spirit is, lacuni, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, 
a little CUNY. Meekness. So there was some stuff they left out, but probably for space. Mm. Oh. Eight. <laughs> she is quick to justify herself and blame her husband. But she's his wife. How can that happen? I've never seen that happen. Except a lot. Uh, quote. Self uh, seeketh not your own. End quote. That's all they could find, huh? This time I mean it. Nine. <clears throat> she is not a good housekeeper. Her house is untidy, cluttered, and not clean. All those things. Quotation. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness, end quote. Oh, and they got another quote. They got a more material here. <laughs> Keepers at home, end quote. That's all they needed, I guess. And another quote. The younger women marry Lacuni, guide the house, end quote. So they left some stuff out there. She is not given to hospitality for no reason other than selfishness and pride. She resists having guests and or preparing meals for strangers. Quote, given to hospitality, end quote. Yeah, but some of those guys, myself in particular, kind of like cooking. So, I guess it's the 21st century. You don't have to pay attention to all this, right? We can, like, live in the now a little bit, don't you think? Not that things really sh have changed because they're different, but because they always should have been this way. They should be better. <sighs> Does this seem like a long, impossible list, Ruth? No, it is not. She answered her own question, Granny did. It is simply an application for Christian wives on the principles God has given for all the redeemed and transformed children of God. Pause. Each in his place, living an unselfish, godly life for his glory. Capital H. Here we're talking about the husband. You're talking about we're all his bitch. If he's real. Ruth, my heart is heavy when I realize how many wives use their influence to tear down the convictions of their husbands. It hurts me to think of the men, the many who rebel against their husbands. That is sad. Their husbands' wishes and the standards they desire to uphold in their homes. It's their home. You're just keeping it and see and, and see lived out in the lives of their families how different the world would be if every wife who professes to be a child of God would earnestly seek the commendation of the virtuous woman in Proverbs and here's a quote the heart of her husband doth satis safely trust in her. End quote. I like Proverbs. Even the parts about, you know, how to handle slavery. Ecclesiasticus is pretty good too, but that's not in the Protestant Bible. It's kind of funny, but yeah, there's some 
crazy shit in there too. I might read it sometime. What do you think? I do take I do take requests, you know, folks. Oh, that the longing goal of the honest effort of every Christian wife would be that her husband could have confidence in her in her and everything to do the right thing at the right time to say the right wait to say the right always to be completely happy with him and with all he wants her to do and to be to teach and train the children right to face cheerfully and bravely any major emergency to be always waiting for him when he comes home from a hard or discouraging day of work and to meet him cheerfully with words of sympathy and encouragement that does sound nice I'm pretty sure everybody would appreciate that anybody would Every honest Christian wife knows her areas of weakness and failure. Okay. May she cultivate by God's enablement the grace of humility to be quick to apologize and acknowledge her failures. Just building you up there, Ruth. <laughs> you go, girl. May she freely go the second mile and take blame for difficulties that arise in her relationship with her husband. It's all her fault. See? Even if it isn't, it is. You just take the blame. Somebody's got to. Be submissive. Isn't that nice? Sorry, totally lost my place. That one threw me. Uh, <laughs> May I plead with you, Ruth, to always face your life honestly as a wife. It's over, girl. You're a servant now. And perhaps someday as a mother, God willing, when you realize that you have failed, seek the Lord's help. Freely make your failure right with the Lord and with your husband. Be hard on yourself. Do not hide behind any excuses. Confess all and determine to humbly and carefully be the wife and mother the scriptures teach you to be. Or the Quran even. They do too. But you might have extra wives to help. Uh, then, yeah. By the grace and help of the Lord, may God grant you wisdom and grace so that your home may be a place of peace and contentment where God's blessing abides and home is a home that is rich, is a rich blessing to the church that you are a part of. Especially if it's the right one, theirs. <clears throat> okay. Totally lost my place, sorry. Happy indeed is the husband, and how blessed indeed is the home 
where the wife is adorned with and for God's glory. This is my prayer for you. <coughs> with her head bowed and with tears in her eyes, Ruth prayed. She is prey. <sighs> Apparently. That's just, we're going to hear a prayer, prayer now, quote. Dear Lord, I commit myself to being with your enabling grace, a wife for your glory, end quote, end tract. God, I thought I was in a bad mood before. All right, that's Rod and Staff Publishers. And you know what? That was so distasteful. I'm going to read it at the beginning of this next. Something to look forward to. So how about that? I didn't even need to roll the dice. I ended up doing them both anyway. Besides, I'm, I, I think I'm tipsy enough now. I'm going to try not to do a lot of commentary. But anyway, let me know if you learned anything and if this made you a better wife, if you happen to be a wife or plan to be a wife. And I mean that for everybody these days because it could apply to anyone these days. And I'm fine with that, honestly. Chime in. It's peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'm hoping to have a better one pretty soon. Things have been a little rough lately. But I'll be fine.